Um, so uh, uh, thanks, Isaac. As I said, my name is Lee Talbot. I am a curator at the George Washington University Museum and the Textile Museum. Um, and the Textile Museum and the TSA have a, uh, a long and intertwined history. Um, so there's often a lot of uh, uh, overlap between the staff um, of the Textile Museum and the uh, Textile Society of America board. Um, and this is actually my second term uh, on the board. So uh, I've been working um, with the board uh, for a number of years. I started off just as a, um, a director at large and went into the uh, working with programs. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, programs uh, with you today. Um, so of course, uh, we plan and implement public programs that further the TSA mission, and that is to exchange and disseminate information about textiles. Um, but just as importantly, uh, these programs give the opportunity for members and non-members alike to come together um, for fellowship and for learning. Uh, before the pandemic, um, the programs that we did mostly concentrated on non-symposium years. So symposium before the pandemic were in the even years and we did uh, programs in, uh, in the um, odd years. Uh, and these were, uh, before the pandemic, these were all in person. Um, and generally they were in the form of textiles close up. Uh, so we would get together maybe three or four times a year uh, visit museum collections, go behind the scenes. Um, these were great programs, but uh, they were expensive. Um, there were a lot of costs involved um, and uh, they were limited in number um, because uh, we could only take a certain amount of people into, for example, museum storage and such. So anyway, um, we used to serve about a hundred people a year uh, when we were doing these in-person programs. Last year, we served over 5,000 people. Um, and that's from the shift to online programming. So it's a completely different uh, landscape for us now. Um, so that, uh, of course, um, when we went into the pandemic, um, we've expanded the type of programs that we have. Of course, uh, uh, we still offer um, the textiles close up, um, but they have, uh, you know, we, of course, we've been doing those online. Um, as uh, a couple of the previous uh, board members have mentioned, we started this new colloquium series um, in uh, uh, 2022 um, called Reclaiming Futures. And this is really uh, to put some substance to uh, the TSA's um, <clears throat> move towards and commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so um, all of these involve artists, scholars, um, discussing textile histories, practices of underrepresented groups. Um, we started off this year with a four-part series. Um, we began uh, with uh, the session one of Reclaiming Lost Traditions in Native American Textile Art, um, and we had two Indigenous makers uh, come together that talked about um, experiences in their communities in uh, reclaiming um, lost traditions. Um, Jennifer Byron from Choctaw Nation uh, talked about their uh, uh, reviving certain uh, textile practices uh, of her group. Vera Long Toshian talked about uh, it from the Abenaki group, um, talked about uh, creating, recreating regalia um, for their recently revived agricultural ceremony. So, anyway, really a fascinating program. Uh, the next one was Surviving Blackness in America quilts as political statement. Um, and this is moderated by Caroline Maslumi. Um, and it focused on the narrative quilts made by the Women of Color Quilters Network. And it just showed how that these provided uh, a canvas um, to make their stories, uh, their voices visible um, in the world. Um, and so we have two more uh, scheduled, one in September uh, that will uh, focus on disabled artists. And then in November, uh, we will focus on Navajo textiles um, with our own Linda Teller Pete. Um, also, with the pandemic, we've uh, started a new type of programming in the form of partnerships. Um, so, we have collaborated with a couple of uh, other educational institutions um, to offer programs. Uh, so, for example, uh, we collaborated with the Fashion Institute of Technology. 
um, on a uh, program on ancient Egyptian. And just for example, that one uh, reached almost 400 people in one session. Uh, but more actively, we've been working with the Textile uh, Museum, and we started a series called Contemporary Voices. Um, and that um, highlights new and interesting uh, makers in the textile field. Um, each one of those um, have bring, been bringing in between three and 400 participants, and, and we're doing uh, those about four times a year. So just reaching really large uh, and new audiences around the world, which is really exciting. Um, we also have started uh, Affinity Groups, which is a new type of program that offers this immediate and direct uh, platform for fellowship, for information sharing. Um, and the programs I talked about above were are pretty much are coordinated directly by the board, but affinity groups are organized independently by group leaders um, in communication with the board. Um, and so we have affinity groups where people with like interest can get together. Um, the, uh, so far, just to, just to name a few, it's the craft economy, emerging artists, ancient historical textiles, um, stitching, um, uh, conservation and textiles and science. Um, so the number of affinity groups uh, keeps growing and as they grow, we can are able to increasingly uh, reach out to more and more diverse audiences and communities. Um, and just to wrap up, um, because uh, programs have been expanding so much in volume um, and in, uh, in type, um, the programs committee has actually been folded into the membership and outreach uh, uh, committee of the organization. Um, before the pandemic, the public programs committee only had two people, um, and because that was sufficient for the small number that we offered at that time. Um, but now with the diversity programs we have, uh, we certainly need a lot of people and we need a coordinated effort um, with our outreach and membership so that we can more directly serve membership uh, and more effectively streamline um, our programs and, and their outreach. Um, we uh, look forward to seeing you at our programs in the future and hope that you might be interested in joining us to help plan and implement some of our programs. Thank you. <laughs>